Spontaneous photography. We all have been there at one time or another where in the spur of the moment, we simply grab a camera and get out to explore whatever comes our way. Spontaneous photography is nothing new and really is the most basic of photography. It is simply great to know, unlike the older days where film was used, that the cost of going out there becomes very reasonable. In its simplest form, one could start taking images right away of the dog, the cat, flowers, macro the hell out of the kitchen, kids or whatever else would tackle your fancy. What if spontaneous photography could be used as a tool and we could gain certain achievements from doing so? Learning how to be a spontaneous photographer and at the same time learning is of course what I mean in this content. Picking up your camera and dealing with the switches in any case has benefits via attaining muscle memory. So is the camera ready to go? Here again we can learn that in order to be spontaneous the camera has to have a charged battery, a formatted card and be set to at least your reasonable images without touching any dials. Is there a reasonable lens on the camera already which could be used for most cases like a 50mm or 85mm perhaps? Having an always ready camera can yield some amazing photo opportunities that may be lost after seconds. A photojournalist for instance would perhaps give insight of how they shoot on the run where there is often very little time. The fun factor as well as possibilities can keep you hooked, often enough adding to your knowledge about light exposure, camera capability, changing to another genre and so on. For instance, birding. Through learning to quickly set your camera and stopping any hesitation, you will find that the speed of your readiness will increase to a degree where images will improve because you are on time. The lens is already trained on the bird well before the moment a nice composition happens. Like a chess player you may gain time by forecasting the next movements of your subject. A scenario could be that you are sitting at the garden table with a camera in reach. A tree movement catches your awareness and there are two birds exchanging food. Now normally this moment would have been missed but now the chances of a photo opportunity is realized. I very much have my camera most of the time nearby and ready to go to the point where I pick up the camera on a regular basis turning it on and taking a random image. Another good point is to test different settings like for instance the focus tracking and what different levels of stickiness actually do or seeing what a S&Q setting does. In short, the more you use your camera and change settings the more you get to know the camera's ability so that work in the field when it counts stops being just a guessing game. Now what are the examples of spontaneous photography to practice? So here are some examples of methods. While sitting in front of the TV, ask yourself to take images of the screen. If for instance a child appears or perhaps a car, a tree or whatever you set as the challenge. Sitting in the garden take an image of every bird. Capture images every time your child looks at you. There are of course many more similar challenges you could set in motion. Of course these are exercises to create muscle memory but can also create some great shots. Just don't drive your family crazy with your sudden craziness. Spontaneous photography is also very much used in street photography whereby a trained mind using foresight and readiness is the bread and butter of great images. Learn to turn around and look back. Find the minimum focus distance of your lens by testing the lens situations. Train your eye to see what others don't. Learn to see light and composition. One can learn a lot through targeted usage of the camera and very little by having the camera simply sitting there lifeless on a shelf. Another great way to practice is to stand in one spot and turn on your axis 
taking one image at every stop until you have completed the full rotation. This can train up your mind about light awareness and composition. Go to public places where it is allowed to take images of pedestrians. Walking raises your heart rate and breathing, which makes it harder to get images sharp and thus practicing in such a way will help you to learn controlling the camera. Controlling when to take an image during a breath whilst improving your stance and solid arm positioning in order to get good images. All this practice creates a better formed photographer for being ready in those moments where everything has to come together within a split second. I had many moments where I failed to get a shot simply because my readiness was lacking. Also, having been out shooting with many fellow photographers, I realized that those who practice often enough end up with the best images. So what is a recommended period of practice? In short, the more you practice, the more ready you become. There is simply no guide, although the camera sitting ready nearby and not packed away certainly gives many opportunities. A camera in your backpack would be no good and essentially the backpack is really for transit in order to get you to the place of where photography begins. I know some of you really want an answer as to how long to practice a day. So let's say 15 minutes a day if possible or longer of course should be a good guide the real point here is that you keep up the practice also if you do have electronic or silent shutter mode available for your camera then select it at least during the practice so no shutter count and thus mechanical wear occurs in the time of practice the shutter count can go up although this investment is very little when considering your readiness for images of a lifetime spontaneous photography is rewarding so try it out and find more ways than what i have suggested here if you have not done so then don't forget to subscribe give the video a thumbs up share it around and hit that bell button to hear about my future videos. Lastly, let people know in the comment box of any more suggestions you may have and how to practice with cameras. Thanks everyone and take care.